Well, we just part of our uh, uh, effort to be more energy independent. You know, we uh, have a fairly large house and it costs quite a bit of money to maintain it and run it. And so we really wanted to, uh, I've looked into geothermal energy for heating and uh, we haven't looked too hard at solar yet, but uh, the wind always blows here. Uh, the hill we live on is Beach Hill Road. and. Uh, so it has fairly good exposure. From the top of the hill back there, you can look right across to the western mountains, so it's a pretty good uh, opportunity for wind to really blow, and it does. The previous owner told us he had a weather station. He recorded 52 miles an hour here, so that was pretty good, and we've seen some winds I think were probably pretty close to that. So anyway, we think uh, we can generate quite a bit of electricity, and. Uh, you know, it can make a difference on our carbon footprint and, um, you know, obviously our pocketbook. And it's a big uh, expense to, to start. Uh, it's, the package is um, $14,500 for their generator with a 33-foot tower, and we wanted a 50-foot, so that cost us another $3,500. And, uh, but, the research I did that said that one of the most common mistakes and one of the worst mistakes is to put in a tower that's too short. So I was not going to do that. And so we got the 50 foot tower. And uh, so hopefully it'll work out well for us. Quality electric, good deal. Right. Should be about 65, 66 paces out there. He made st bigger strides than I did, but. That's the 200 feet it has to be. Hello. How are you doing this morning? Good, you? Not bad. Wish that pole was up yesterday. It was blowing a gale here yesterday. Right. <laughs> My biggest concern is uh, the way energy is in this country now. I mean, we're, we're, I, I am 100% sure global warming is real. And if it continues on current path, then uh, as an article I read uh, last week in uh, a financial newspaper by the dean of the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies at Yale University said that this world will be uninhabitable by 2050 if we don't change things right off. P and point blank was saying that our capitalist system thus far in this country is has utterly failed us because it's not sustainable and uh, so it has to change into something that is sustainable and uh, uh, and he pointed out that the course we're on is is going to lead us to uh, irreversible changes in our climate and uh, and he used the word uninhabitable by 2050 if we don't change. So that does not bode well for the human species obviously. And of course that means my kids and uh, grandchildren should I have them have no chance at a good life later on in their years and uh, that disturbs me greatly. As far as being an outdoorsman, certainly, it's going to change everything. It's going to change, uh, I, I like to fish for trout and salmon in the river, and if the water's warm, then they're gone. You know, it'll be a bass fishery, and, uh, you know, that's a shame. Maine isn't known for bass. Maine's known for its cold water species. So this is just a small part we're doing. We have a hybrid uh, SUV. Uh, it's a Ford Escape. And uh, even though it's an SUV, we do get, we're getting almost 31 miles to the gallon right now. So that's pretty good for an SUV. And uh, we just had a home energy audit done um, by a name, man named John Hill in uh, Winslow. And that was pretty interesting. And we have now some projects to do to help uh, cut down the energy usage, usage in the house. So that's another thing we've done we're going to follow through on. So...
so this wind generator is just a, a, a part of our plan. Uh, I don't know if we can get this place to be energy independent or not, but we're going to try. <laughs> they bring the, to uh, the tower in in sections, and I believe they use a come along to pull them together, to squeeze them together, and then they mount the generator on top of that, and it's a tilt-up model where they attach an arm to the perpendicular. If this was the uh, generator laying down, then they uh, attach an arm vertical to that and a cable that would run from the top of it to the top of the arm to a pickup truck. And so when they, uh, they pull on the pickup truck, once they get everything together, it'll just tilt it right up in place like that. And that's also how the way it's taken down when uh, it should it need maintenance or, or whatnot, it's the same, same method. So. Uh, so it's a pretty simple contraption really, consisting just of the, the base, the tower, and the base is already poured. Uh, the base is uh, seven, let's see, seven by seven by six feet, I believe, six feet deep, and it weighs it's 32,000 pounds of concrete anyway. So it's pretty hefty. There's no guy wires. It's just a monopole tower. There's no guy wires. And the generator is uh, sits on top of it, of, of course, and the blades, there's three blades. They're kind of a, an S-curve blade, and they're six feet long, so it's 12-foot diameter. Um, and I hope to have uh, a meter between the entrance panel, which is here in this room, and the tower. And I hope so I can see what the output is directly, because the meters on the house between the grid, which is central main power, their lines out, and, uh, or in, I should say. Uh, of course, those meters will measure electricity uh, after the house has used a portion of what we're generating. So you can't tell from their meters exactly what we're generating. It depends on the house usage. So I want a meter in here so I can tell exactly what we're generating. And then that will, you know, I can correlate that with wind power, with uh, the wind speed, what I generate at X wind speed, say it's blowing 15 miles an hour, I can tell you how much I generate at 15 miles an hour. Uh, these are rated, these turbines are rated at 1.8 kilowatts at 12 miles per hour. And um, uh, the salesman Roger Lambert has one and he said he's generated up to 4 uh, kilowatts per hour uh, with obviously a, a storm with high winds. So, uh, you know, that doesn't happen that frequently. But still, that's, uh, that's going to be... Uh, a plus, you know, we'll look at storms differently now. <laughs> you know, it's windy today, great. <laughs> I think as far as generating electricity for household use, I think the wind generator at this site is going to be much better because, face it, in the winter in particular, you're not getting much sun. And we're often getting 24 hours of wind you know, because it's a very windy site here. And uh, the snow drifts down across here. I mean, I can plow the driveway, and then in three hours I have to plow it again where it drifts in, some, some storms. Uh, so solar is something we're going to look at, but probably just for hot water. Uh, you know, if we could do that, then that's a big plus, you know, just doing that. But uh, we are, our house is oriented well for our, the front roof, but the problem is we have two big old maple trees shading that side, so obviously they're not going to come down until they have to come down. And so we'll have to put the solar power on a pedestal probably out around uh, one of the lawns somewhere away from structures so it gets enough sun. So, But that's, that's we're going to, we'll go a year and see how things shake out with this wind generator first. And, see how much we produce, how much less, less energy we use, and we'll go from there. We own 64 acres, and it's pretty much all field. I think there's less than 10 acres of woods. I think there's about 55 acres of field. The field that the generator is going to sit in is a 44-acre field, and uh, I wish the generator could be on top of the hill, but it can. It has to be within 300 feet of the entrance panel and a barn 60 feet long and the generator is 50 feet high so that cuts it down to 200 feet behind the barn is where it's going to sit and that's why it's sited where it is. 
Uh, that's the main reason it's sited where it is. Uh, so the land is, uh, has a great northwest exposure because of this 48, 44 acre field that sits on top of this hill. And so the wind comes right down across the air and it's going to hit this generator just perfect. So, uh, but yet it's, it's fairly open no matter which direction you're looking at. So uh, I think we'll generate, uh, no matter where the wind comes from, we'll, we'll be able to generate. So that's a big plus. But in Maine, the northwest exposure is the biggie. I've seen wind charts that shows the predominant uh, energy generation uh, from different directions and it's skewed heavily towards the northwest in Maine. So we've got that, that's our best exposure. So it should work out well. But unfortunately, not everybody has a site that a wind generator makes sense. It just, they'll never pay for it and, and a lot of sites because they don't have the exposure to the northwest that you need for this. So you would have to put up a humongous tower in a lot of places, and towers are expensive. One thing that kind of aggravates me about wind generation is the state of Maine right now has it set up so um, central Maine power only has, if we produce excess energy, and say we produce uh, 400 kilowatts in a month and we only use 300, then central Maine power has to give us a hundred kilowatt uh, credit for that month and this carries over for 12 months but at the end of 12 months central Maine power gets to roll back the credits to zero we lose all our credits at the end of 12 months if we don't use it and that shouldn't be like that I mean the way energy is in this country right now if there's we need to provide incentives for people to do this stuff it was a good day. I'm glad to see that up there. It makes me feel good. I like the looks of it. I think it uh, fits right in here. Uh, you know, I don't think it's obtrusive. i uh, kind of hoping for a thunder shower later so I can see it turn around. <laughs> the, uh, the turbine right now is pointed to the northwest. You can see the blades are actually on the back of it. It acts just like a weather vane. So the heavy part swings away from the wind, if you know what I mean. So the front of it is actually the part that's on the pole, more centered on the pole, and that is going right to the northwest right now, which is where the predominant wind comes from. I hope it works out great. Nice spot for it. I was very happy with the crew. I think the crew did a great job today, knew what they were doing, didn't take a lot of discussion to know different things that need to be done, very efficient. Things went pretty well. They had to wait a little bit for the, uh, some of the electrical work to be done, but it went right along. Joy dish detergent. That's what they spread on here to lubricate it when they when they press these together. Joy dish detergent, liquid dish dish detergent. <laughs> Just in case anybody was wondering. Mm -hmm.